Russian's best friend. No, not a person, but in the past, that's how the Russians treated their samovar. It had a place of honor at the table, and in some homes, it still does. Tea from a samovar tastes much better than tea from an electric kettle. It smells of smoke, fresh wood, and pine cones. Literally a self-boiler, a samovar has traditionally been used to heat water for tea. And that's how it's done the old way. Water from the well, wood chips, and a lot of huffing and puffing make up the recipe for a perfect tea time. Ooh. God, you're so heavy. A teapot filled with brew or zavarka in Russian goes on top to stay warm. You then dilute the brew with hot water for just your cup of tea. When we want to cool the tea down, we add cold water into the cup, which frankly ruins the taste. But in the past, people would pour their tea into a saucer. We hardly ever do it now, but next to a samovar with all this smell, it seems perfectly natural. That's how Russian merchants did it. <laughs> and the Russians loved their samovars. More than just a water boiling device, it was a symbol of home, bringing friends and family together. A small samovar like this, meant for just one person, was even dubbed selfish. Tea time was very much a social thing. If relatives or friends weren't speaking to each other for some reason, they'd meet for tea to make up and use their samovar as a mediator. They'd actually talk to it, asking to pass on their messages. Dear Samovar, please tell my cameraman to stop sulking because we're almost done and he'll be going home soon. Huh. Dear Samovar, please tell Svetlana that I'm very happy about it. The first Russian Samovar was made in the 18th century and soon the country couldn't be imagined without it. Samovar competitions became all the rage. The biggest ones usually won. Many Samovars perished during World War II, melted into bullets by order of Stalin. But a lot of them survived. And if they're lucky, they can even get a new life here. In his workshop, Valery collects old Samovars and restores them to their former glory. A brand new looking Samovar will set you back some $2,000. But for him, it's more than just business. Each samovar has a story to tell, a story not just of someone who used it a hundred years ago, but a story of someone who had it made. Just like people, they're all different. This simple looking thing is made up of some 45 pieces. Putting it all back together is quite a job. And whether they're used purely for decoration or actual tea making, samovars have firmly become part of Russian exotica. Barack Obama was treated to a cup of tea from a samovar kindled in a traditional way, with a jackboot. And it's no surprise that some of ours are a permanent fixture in souvenir shops. It will be in different shape, uh, like this, bigger, like, a, like a, a bigger shape or smaller shape, and it will be painted in different style, like uh, we have a different uh, traditional colors. A Russian writer once said that while in Europe it's hard to imagine a home without a fireplace, in Russia it's without a samovar. Not every Russian home now has one, but you can hardly find a taste more Russian than a cup of tea brewed in a samovar. Svetlana Kurakina, Primetime Russia, RT.